Well, Bruce Arian said the other day, the dual threat quarterback is clearly here to stay. Now, I want to bring in Doc Walker here. He's part of the broadcast team for the Washington Commanders, and he's my dear friend and my friend. How the heck are you doing? Doc can't hear you. It'd be it would be how's that? You got it'd it. Be, yeah, it'd be hard to do any better than I'm doing, <laughs> but I'll try. I, I'm I'm willing to try. Yeah. <laughs> you've been doing it forever, Doc. We Doc, keep fooling them, man. Been we keep fooling them. In DC now. Well, I got here in 1980, and um, we we're just talking about the World Baseball deal today. And the beauty about it is that you're in a market this long. And I've seen the Capitals win a cup, the Nationals win a pennant, world you know world championship, and and so the Mystics have won the WNBA, of course with the Maryland Terrapins that basketball program, the Hoyas who now got a new coach, but what they seen the peak, been the Final Fours, worked with Coach for twelve years, so I'm really into the fabric of the community, and. We got so much unfinished business in football because I've seen we're on a third name. We've had a multitude of quarterbacks. You can always tell a program in trouble because they're double digit quarterbacks. Yeah, I heard you mention Elway, all the guys you mentioned, Thiesman, Elway. The beauty about them, they all got a dime or more, 10 or more years where they had the same address. You know, and we go back to the lingerie Olympics they had in Indianapolis again. And we're still praising guys out of pads. And I love this sport because, you know, we just lost uh, Sims, a wide receiver. He's a hell of a football player. He happens to play wide receiver, but he's a football player. He covers kicks. He blocks on punts. He catches in the red zone. He can go deep. He's 6'5". He's from Alabama. We, got, we have too many players, too much talent, and not enough football players. Now they're getting more football players. I really think that they're right on the verge of busting loose if they can get some stability at quarterback. But it's like going through this drought, waiting, you know, and and it's it's horrible because I refuse to quit on them. I need one more parade, and then I'm headed to the to the beach. But I can't leave yet, and so I'm committed to see this thing out to one more Lombardi Trophy. Doc, let me ask you this. Um, with all the turmoil upstairs, mm-hmm. I got to tell you, man, football is is looking positive. And I don't know if you've heard this comment from somebody outside the area there, mm-hmm. but I think football is looking very positive. You give the extension to the D-tackle. Your receiver from Penn State panned out. He's a beast. You, yeah, the McLaurin kid's a superstar. Animal. Your defense is getting Chase Young back. Um, the quarterback position, obviously. But I'm telling you, you get Eric Bieniemy in the room, you've got Jack Del Rio, you've got Ron Rivera. There's professionals in the room there, aren't there? There's no excuse for us to fail. Uh, I'm so proud of Bieniemy. It's a perfect storm. Um, I'm a mascot guy, offensive line coach. Love him. Love the fact that he could see, you know, that, hey, we could probably do this, but you need to do you. And that ain't necessarily how I may see it. I mean, I think it was a mutual departure. They say fire, but that helps them get paid. But I respect that. But I need Eric in charge of everything. We didn't score enough points. Our defense has a chance to do be special. They need points, man. You, you, you guys want to get after the quarterback when he's down by 14 to 18 points. We don't score enough points. So the offense, we needed a fix there. And um, I like Brissett. I love Howell. Uh, but to me, it's about it's got to be about competition. I say this every day on the air. Any team in last place in this division should have no starters. Every damn position is wide open. Who the hell we got talking about starters? We're in last place. So I need – now, John Allen will laugh. Deron Payne, they'll laugh. But you know what? They'll compete. Terry McLaurin, he, he, he competes. Anybody afraid of losing a job shouldn't be on your team anyway. So 
I just like where this team is going. I think Martin Mayhew is going to add a lot to this system. Cause we had a lot of guys from the same hub, Panther hub. We all do that. We're creatures of our own people around us. And we were very insecure about breaking outside that box. But hell, if you're 500 every year, you got to do something different. <laughs> you know, you got, it, and they always talk about like Pittsburgh now. I love Tomlin and I love the Steelers. But don't be calling me a bragging about you didn't have a losing season. It's the Steelers. I expect you to be kicking down doors in Super Bowl. Now they're bragging about no losing seasons? No, man, uh-uh. That's my point. We got too many people making too much money to be in last place. I mean, in our era, I mean, come on. These dudes now, are you serious? <laughs> man, I wish I was in the front office somewhere now. I said, dude, <laughs> seriously? And we got guys trying to get $50 million a year. We got this one dude running out to the darkness, getting me fifty, sixty dollars a year. Then I kick him in his ass. Let me tell you something, man. And look at the stuff they're putting up with. Guys holding them hostage. Dude, they won a big game in a damn near decade. I'm going, what the hell's going on? These dudes are going, they're going buck wild, man. And I ain't mad at them. I ain't mad at them. But I'm like going, well, we got a lot of suburban crap going on on the NFL. I, I tell you what. <laughs> I'm so uh, glad I'm out of this hey, time. I don't know. Hey, hey, Doc, the, the league used to be inner city dudes like us, man. But now we're suburban guys out there. <laughs> the league full of Huxtables, dude. And these dudes talking about, I'm not going to play for 30 minutes. 30, I, I, I can't do that. Hey, Slim, what you getting, man? I'm only getting 30 million. <laughs> and I'm going, hey, hey, man. Look, but I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them because the owners are making – they're making so much money. They got the number one TV product on earth. Okay. So they got a demand product. Look at what these organizations are being sold for now. I mean, they're trying to run Dan Snyder in and out and he's holding them with a, he's got a water pistol. Now you think this is what kills me. Here's a guy borrowing money from them. Got stuff all over the place. Oh, I'm not selling to one of the richest guys in the world. I don't like him. Who are you talking to, Slim? You think we're that stupid? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is what, but they actually act like this is real. You know, so so we got a guy who's broke from a wealthy standpoint, holding 20, 31 millionaires at, at hostage. Come on, Slim. With a, a water joke. pistol. He's got a water pistol. You know what I mean? They boxed him out already. He can't build anywhere. Nobody wants him to be here. So I'm going, let's get on with this. Move forward. You know, and, and so, so far, one dude did that. This dude got to get a consortment. They got to get 35 people together and investors talking about all these deals and whatever. Bezos, I'm laughing. Uh, he doesn't like him. Who gives a damn what he thinks or what he likes? <laughs> hey, man, and they think we're stupid. And we sit around. Same thing going on with, with Jackson right now. Hey, I don't agree with his technique. I don't agree with his methodology. He's a hell of a player. But you can't beat the system, Slim. You know, he, he got a water gun, too. He's aiming it at him. You know what I mean? They just they ain't going to break, man. They ain't going to break. He yeah. bet on himself, and it didn't work out. No, I, I said, it. you know, he gambled. He gambled. What happens when you losing. gamble and lose? Hey, but you know what? He can still win because I think the Ravens still, still love him. They're going to pay him. But this league, man, you think you're going to get these bunch of billionaires together on a yacht? Because you know they went out there and started talking amongst themselves. They still pissed off the guy in Cleveland say, hey, let's not ever let this thing happen again. You know, wink, wink. And now this dude's here he is. He's he's box office. And nobody's his phone's not ringing. Hey, come on, man. Yeah, but we're supposed to be dumb enough to think, well, you know, and he got hurt in the pocket. Look, the league ain't going to change, Slim. We've seen it. From the days of a five hundred dollar a week, you got for a week of practice, and you couldn't wait to get it. And when you threw that in your bank account, it bounced up and down in there and went in there. <laughs> you know, and you went out and you got a chew and a stick and a beer and like this is my workout money. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you no workout? Yeah, no. That's the new kids. They got paid. You know, when they started this is here, they would say, "Oh yeah, this guy's got a workout." I said, what? 
I'd have cut his behind <laughs> if he wasn't in shape. Tell him I'm going to pay him to work out. They did it to themselves, and I ain't mad at him. I'm glad, hey, man, because the guys, the 32 luckiest guys in the world, it's all-inclusive club. It's not inclusive. It's all-inclusive, okay? And they're doing this, and oh, oh, magic. Yeah, they get a brother. Hey, man, here's a slice. Come in here and join us. We need you for color. You know, they're bringing these people up in there. What do you think was stupid? You know, and this is the boys' club is closed, man. I'm, I'm, closed. You know what, though, Doc? It sounds so much better coming from you than me when you say that. <laughs> hey, man, look. What, you know just, why I'm they're bringing magic real. in? I don't want I, – they're bringing magic in for the ticket sales in D.C. And, and Flores. the look of diversity. Everyone yeah, well, look knows at Flores. It. Coach Flores down in Miami. Hell of a coach. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he with the Vikes. He tried to challenge the system. Dude's right. You know he's right. I know he's right. It'll never come up that way. But they did open the door and allow him to work so he can go in, man. Of course, Pittsburgh, though, where the Rooney rule is. Well, but they are a godsend. They, they put are. their money where their mouth is. Yep. They pre they live what they preach. You know, and, and I, I just I respect the hell out of them. Thank God for them. Absolutely, Doc. Yeah. Let me ask you, what happened yeah. with Carson Wentz in DC? He just ran out of gas. You know what? I I didn't know him before. I was in awe of him as a sideline reporter as I was. I saw him do some Houdini. We had guys, Chris Baker had him in a lock, in a lock, like they call the lock next monster hole, defensive tackle swap. He slipped out of that guy and went, ran for 22 yards, came out again, hit. The dude was Houdini. Then his body started breaking down a little bit. I think he was tripping a little bit mentally. And maybe, I don't know, not the guy I met. The guy I met was smooth, good dude. He tried to be a real good guy, but he ran out of talent. You know, some guys don't recover from certain injuries. I think it's in his brain. He may be able to recover, but three teams in three years, when you're the quarterback, I don't care who you are. He got $28 million, but I think he'd have given half of it back just to have had, he'd have paid to have success. <laughs> just want to be one of the fellas, you know, and it didn't work out, and – Ron and me took a shot at it. Hey, didn't work. So thank God, finally here they moved on. You know, usually they try to save face. They did. They manned up. You know what I mean? They loaded yep. their own gun, blew their own brains. Okay, let's move on. Because you can't get tied up in failure in this league. Next, and then you get to Kai Howell. The funny part about it, you got this dude sitting over there the whole year. They put him in one game against the Cowboys, who are superior defensively we joke a lot but no Dallas brings it and they beat them and they had incentive to win the game they did I don't want to hear all that crap about they no, oh, no they, they wanted did to have win. incentive to win the yeah, game they couldn't win okay they got smashed up front and this boy how he went to work on it's only through 19 passes it's 19 more than he done before and it was better than anybody had played for their team all year and so you ask yourself yo slim what were y'all hiding him for they weren't hiding him Tried to save face. You know, he tried to make a mistake go good. It didn't work. So now we move forward, you know, and bring in uh, Brissett and this dude with Cleveland. You know, he got a raw deal. It was one of those – well, no. Nobody getting paid this kind of money is a raw deal. <laughs> but it was one of those deals we showed a lot of character. You know, they bring in a guy who I loved he was kid. better than. I he was better than him last year. Now, I think my boy's going to bounce back because – Last time I saw him in Texas, seriously, whole Deshaun was a beast. But it shows you in life, never take anything for granted. Because let's suppose he doesn't recapture those Superman skills he had. It'll be a tragedy because the dude is freakish. But last year, it, to me, it was a testament to the NFL. You can't just roll out your bed. You don't just run out of this through an airport and come play this game. No, don't work that way, Slim. I don't care who you are. You have got to commit, pay the price, survive it, and then thrive in it. And if you get lucky, you may get on a good team. If not, you'll get these scars that stay with you the rest of your life. So while you're there, you better pull some out of it good because you'll be limping and forgetting things and, and all kinds of things will be happening to you for the rest of your life. 
You mean wearing take a monitor seriously. where your wife's following you and knowing yeah, what you Yeah, take it seriously, <laughs> Slim. Yeah, because this ain't no joke. It's like those Hollywood stuntmen. I used to, when I was at UCLA, I go, the thing was cool was watching these guys get summer jobs, you know, at, at 20th Century Fox and the, at the movie studios. I gained a huge deal of respect, stuntmen. Ain't no joke. Tom Cruise got a lot of Top Gun. Yeah, you got me. I, I'm all in. If you did that yourself, brother, yeah, I'll buy you a shot anytime I see you. Because <laughs> they know where the hell I'd have took in any of that. But you know, you know, it's good. We 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 we're glad we went through it. We're glad we survived it. But we also know guys that are sitting somewhere in a room right now, just staring at nothing. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you yeah. a little quick story here, Doc. Yeah. Boy, man, Billy Ray Smith. Yeah. Ooh. Man, he's in, he's in yeah. really he's in oh. really bad shape right now, man. Oh, hey, let me man. ask you one question here. Yeah. Give me your take on Jalen Hurts, the Eagles. Oh, absolutely. Love and adore and admire him because all the way back from Alabama through Oklahoma, but here and not being their choice or anybody's choice um, in sports, I'm going to say in my lifetime, the biggest compliment I've seen in American sports is when they you're better than they'd like you to be. And if you don't look the way they'd like you to look, they just change the rules. Okay. Kareem, you can't dunk anymore. <laughs> you know, the, no, no, no. The dunk is out. We, 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 we don't dunk. Okay. All right. And this so, whole time in college, they did that to no, him. No, no, no problem. Bullet Bob Gibson, my hero. Lower the mile. 19, oh, we got, bro, we got to lower this. We can't have him doing this to these guys. All right. Lower the mile. Still go get it. Whenever you do something and they for now, all oh, the scrum, all oh, the front. No, it ain't no scrum. It's a quarterback to squat 650. Okay. So if you want to get your little guys in there in the weight room, get them out of the quarterback room and get them in there with the old line and let them train with those guys, maybe you can get an inch or a yard. We got stopped four times less than a yard. Not Philadelphia, not Jalen. And he earned that. It's nothing better sight for me to see quarterback in there with the big dogs, man, lifting. So, not, and he can throw it. He can do everything. And um, I'm really proud of him. He is what uh, what it's all about. And you don't have to worry about him showing up with a Glock on his shoulder. You know, you ain't going to worry about none of that. You know, it ain't that it's, look, everybody do you. But you'll never worry about that with him. He understands the responsibility he has representing the Philadelphia Eagles and his family. You'll never see that. I ain't saying he ain't doing it, but you'll never see it. Okay, you might have been a saint, Dan, but I wasn't. And all I'm saying is that I never considered because you didn't get caught means that you're brilliant. No, it means you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? And I think sometimes too, Doc, the one thing that I said about Hurts, and when people were saying – that he wasn't elite. I still think he's got a way to go because, yeah. again, consistency to me is elite. That's yeah, the word got- to me, elite. However, it was Nick Saban that was really the guy that gave up on him because he didn't want to coach him. Because, Doc, when you have so many guys at Alabama like that, you don't have time to sit there and develop. But when you're in the NFL and you commit $50 million or $35 million, if you pay the guy – Here's the ruling. Here's the rule in that league, right? If you pay him, you got to play him. And you got means you got to coach him. And I yeah. think that's what he's also overcoming is the fact that people had given up on him. And now look where he is. He's in a position to potentially make $50 million. Yeah, and Oklahoma didn't give up on him. And I don't know how much if Nick gave up. Nick knew that. See, the, when Nick's coordinator, he had Kirby Smart on defense. Well, not Kirby's at Georgia. Yeah. See, sometimes it's too much cross pollination. Yep. And all of a sudden, so Nick knew that he couldn't just pound people off the ball anymore. He had to go aerial. Being a genius, so what do you do? You, you, what does he coach? What are the real genius? They coach DBs. They coach the last line of defense. Bec- and, 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 and they also coach the hardest room to coach. The hardest room to make sure we're managed properly. Because you got super athletes over there with unique skill sets. And may not be the best listeners on earth, but he makes sure 
And he tells them, I'm going to get you all paid. He gets them all paid. Because they come out of there, they're all going to be paid because they have guaranteed pressure. What's the DB's best friend? Pressure. They give you guaranteed pressure, and their linebackers run 4-5. So, yeah, be, it's nice to be at Alabama and Georgia and, the, you know, Ohio State and Southern Cal. These schools that can get that unique talent in. But this guy, Hurst, went from one superpower to another and didn't miss a beat. Kept winning. And, you know, go to the second round, about to get paid. But I bet he'll do it like like um, Mahomie did it in Kansas City. He'll do it in a way he can keep winning. A fool runs out there and puts so much on his plate he can't even finish it. Wise man makes sure everybody eats so he can eat again. Yeah, no, Watch I, what happens. Hey, yeah. hey, Doc, I want to leave you with this. Okay. So my daughter played a rugby game at UCLA. She's a Bruin, right? She, She's so a- we, we we're, we're we're there at we're there at UCLA. Yeah. And I go into the Jackie Robinson room. I walk around that. My daughter's yeah. like this, and you're gonna love this, Doc. My father played golf with Jackie. He yeah. lived in Stanford, Connecticut, and died yeah. in Stanford. And my uncle, Andy Robustelli, I'm sure you know the name. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We're very good friends, so I know the Robustellis. Great dude. Yeah. And we're walking around, and 42 is ever. My daughter goes, Dad, this campus is freaking unbelievable. I mean, the, the rugby stadium. I mean, I go, honey, these guys play in the Rose Bowl. You know that, right? I mean, <laughs> hey, you – Hey Doc, you ever get back there, man? That place. No, is- no, and just imagine when they actually get people to show up at the game. I mean, oh, what is going to look was like? Yeah, killing the Aikman was killing them for that. Well, yeah, and you know what? They, they, I mean, coming off of the COVID deal, when you got a bus, when you're off campus, it's it is a difficult opportunity thing for on campus. Is the collegiate thing you can run in there? It takes a little more effort to get out there, but watch. I think Chip will get it going. Uh, defensively, they had a couple breakdowns that cost them. I was not happy with the bowl game, but overall, they got to make a commitment. And they got athletes in there. And I love it because when SC gets going again, you have another choice. You either compete or you be beheaded. That's what I love about it. You 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 don't have a choice because they're going to crank up because they're 100% all in to me. And UCLA is is they're doing the complete thing. Everybody wins, and you know everybody's graduate. All that but SC is more like SEC. You know they're going after winning in football, the big revenue chip, getting after it at a high level. What they did in one, they were garbage, and they fixed that offense in one year. So the coach and the quarterback are phenomenal. I saw them against Oregon State. I said, "Oh my God, hey, He's hey, be Doc, hard to beat. you know the bad thing about." The two places you played at, um, mm-hmm. Washington and UCLA. UCLA's mm-hmm. UCLA's now going to the Big Ten. Yeah, Washington doesn't have. I mean, how do you how do you feel about them? I mean, dude, when I look at UCLA, Big Ten playing at Ames, Iowa. I don't know. I mean, we had to do it. We had to go. I hated it. We had. I mean, because they had turf. When you out in Southern Cal, man, you feel like the rest of the world's disadvantaged. Oh yeah, you know we had grad on turf. It's cold. We got sun. You know, look at our the, our atmosphere. The people that support us. But here's the good news. That's where the money is. You follow the money. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing you learn about in class, it's about economics. We're going where the money is. And I I envision. I grew up with the AFL, the Raiders, Chargers, on the West Coast, and I saw that. Daryl and Monica, though you know that's what I grew up on, and then so that was a separate league. Paul Lowe, I'm watching the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, just lost. Well, we're losing a lot up now, but that great Chiefs team. I mean, I, I idolized that team. Well, then they merged. It's going to be Lynn Dawson. Be S- yeah, well, Lynn Dawson was the quarterback. Otis Taylor yeah. was my guy outside. You're going to see a merger. It's going to be the SEC. And the Big Ten. Yeah. Now, there may be 25 schools, each one of them. Yeah. But it's going to be NFC, AFC, NFC, NFC. And it's going to be a super, that college all-star game, uh, championship game. It's going to be a reality. The other people, you can't compete. It's a revenue game. 
You know, and out west, they're playing this game after night, after midnight. Hell, on the East Coast, man. They're showing these games Saturday night. People are partying or sleep. So recruiting is a hell of a disadvantage. Oh, yeah. If you're just on West Coast games. Now these people be seeing these kids playing from Rutgers to Maryland to Iowa, Nebraska, now more eyes. And then when you see those shots from our campus to your campus, and if they get any background in it, you get a chance to see some of the students. Win, Dude, win I mean, it's, 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 but it's, it's an NIO um, thing. Who are we kidding? Kid will go play in prison right now for the kind of money they're paying you. So it's <laughs> NIO. You know what I mean? You can put me in San Quentin with the kind of money that they're giving out now. Come on, who are we kidding? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that the governor's not thought that up already. Hey, <laughs> Just to let just to let you go here on this. Yeah. Did you play for Vermeil? Yes, sir. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. So you played for you played with Randy Cross then too, my Absolutely. boy. Absolutely. My boy was in the huddle. Yeah, he was playing um guard. And um no, we, the huge corporation was the line. Terry Donahue was the best individual coach I've ever seen in college level. He coached the offensive line and and Frank Gantz was, uh, our, you know, tight ends coach. And um, we had Rod Dowhauer, OC. We, wow. had, we, had a, we had a lot of pros, a lot of great – well, every Billy Matthews running back coach, uh, Hughes, Chet Hughes, linebacker coach. Look, all these guys went to Philly. You know, we went to Rose Bowl. We beat Ohio State 23-10. I'm sorry about that, Buckeyes, because they were 10-0. <laughs> but, you know, but we didn't give a damn. And so, in the end – all those guys went to Philly. Everybody got paid. And I go, well, what happens? They leave. That's what you're in college to do, to leave. You know, you it's, 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 it's maturity. You go there, you accomplish your goals, and get the hell out and go make money. So I ain't mad at him. I see Dick at the Super Bowls, and he coached, of course, at Kansas City and then the Rams, and he got in it again. And I'm really proud of him because he he taught us how to, how to win. We – thought it was cool to get to the Rose Bowl. We scrimmaged during that week of the Rose Bowl. He made it very clear. Going to the game, anybody can buy a ticket and go, but only one team's going to win. Hey, Doc, game. listen, yeah. we got to roll here, man. Okay. But that's an awesome story. So my man's got a Super Bowl ring and a Rose Bowl championship ring. I'm working How on another doing? one. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm. Hey, man, I told you I feel fantastic. Hey, Seriously. I yeah. – being Doc Walker is a good thing. Doc, I love yeah. you so much, and thank you thank for you, doing Dan. this. Thank you, Dan. I'm honored to be on your show, man. All my friends, they see it. You popularly go from East Coast, West Coast, and all over. And I told him, I said, he does, you know, see hands out. This is kind of like a handout deal. So he brings me on to the disadvantaged and underprivileged, and I represent that group. And we're honored to be on the show. Doc, I love you, man. I'm so yeah. privileged to be your friend, man, all these years. Thank you, and God bless you and your family. Thank you, Doc. Hey, can't wait to do it, man. Let's go, man up. Love you, man. The great Doc Walker, too. If you're ever up in the D.C. area, he's a must-listen to. He's one of the more revered men in that area, too, because you know why? As you can hear, Doc's never going to not give you it straight. See, hes I would say this. Doc Walker's probably the black version of Big Sills. <laughs> How come when he says shit, Tone, how come when he says shit, it sounds smoother? <laughs> it just sounds smoother. I say it, I sound like a chainsaw. I mean, <laughs> dude, Doc is such a good, dude, this guy's got three Super Bowl rings. And he's got a Rose Bowl ring. And I never realized that he had played for Dick Vermeil at that, at UCLA. Oh, my God, one of the absolutely greatest campuses I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I'm not in his class. Probably, Arthur, this may be one of the very few things you and I completely agree on. I agree on that. Doc's good people, man. Just um, He's been my friend for, geez, since I was 23. I'm almost 60. Man, long time. I love the guy. I hope you get a chance to check him out. He's such a good dude. Thank you so much. Doc's not a hater. <laughs> Doc doesn't drink haterade. I don't really think you listen then to him when he's up in D.C. and how he goes after.
the commanders because Doc is pretty sharp on that commander team. I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. The Doc Walker interview will be up on Jacob Sports till tomorrow, 3 to 6. We appreciate you stepping in with us. Please hit the like button. Tone, great stuff. We thank you very much. Xander, Big Joe, all good.